Before we get this episode started, I do have to train our team of four up to level 10. That way everybody's in great fighting shape for the routes ahead. For this series, since this is the first time I am doing this, I am doing training in this series differently. I'm going to have light music in the background while I read and respond to your comments and questions in the description and on my Discord server. So if you would like to be a part of that in a future training montage, definitely leave me a comment below or a question on my Discord server or in the comments section below. You can find the link to my Discord in the description. So with that being said, let's get started training. When you plan or want to start live streaming, he says he'd love to see it. I would love to see it too. A link to my Twitch can be found on my channel page, and I plan on starting live streaming full time very soon, with Twitch exclusive wedlock challenges that I plan on being very interactive with. I have great plans for Twitch things, and I can't wait to start. I'd love to begin before the end of the year for sure. I will definitely have a video out when I'm active and full time over there to let everybody here know. Which Pokemon from a previous series that never got to be used do you wish you used the most? Honestly, I can't remember very many Pokemon from previous series. However, there is one Pokemon that stands out greatly from Pokemon Sun. I really wish I got the chance to use Agaroth the Marini. I think Toxapex would have been an awesome Pokemon to use and pretty unique too. Probably won't get a chance to use one of those ever again unless they're available in the Generation 8 game coming next year. If you can remember, what was the first lock you did, and what team did you have? I do remember, fondly actually, and I'll talk about it for a bit right here. The first Nuzlocke variant I ever did was on Pokemon Black. I have a lot of highlights from that playthrough. I don't remember the death count, but it was definitely over 15, and I ended up losing to Marshall in the end. It was a standard Nuzlocke with a limit of 5 items per battle total. My fondest memory was using the Basculin you get in Driftvale City from a trade being Red Eyes. I traded the Blue Eyes Basculin I got for Red Eyes on White since I liked the name a little bit better. That Basculin ended up dying to the final Bianca fight against her Musharna. My final team was Ovenbaked the Simiseer, a part of my original six, Hope the Unpheasant, also a part of the original six, McFlurry the Vanillix, Hash Slash the Bisharp, Automaton the Golurk, and Mazoa the Archaeops. And unfortunately, half of that team was added right at the end of the game because it got really unlucky in Victory Road. So, I know you've always said that you've pretended you were commentating for people and things like that, even way before you even had a channel. But was there some driving force that made you take that leap of faith into YouTube? There definitely was! As I'm sure a lot of you feel, there aren't very many people who make Nuzlocke and Wedlock videos that have the same care and feeling into them the way that Marilands does. And while playing on my own, and commentating my own playthroughs in my free time, I thought to myself, hey, I have the same passion and feeling as Maryland does. And I knew I needed to start making my own videos so I could give all the other Maryland fans something else to watch when they already have seen all of this series. So that's exactly what I did, and I hope you all see the same passion and feeling in my videos as you do with his, because it's definitely there. How many physical Pokemon cartridges do you own? Oh, I don't even know where to begin. I could easily say I have them all, which I do, but this brings me to an interesting story as I didn't just buy them all. My cousin Kathy was stationed in Japan when I was born, and the Pokemon craze was still all over the place, so she got me a ton of Pokemon things for me, being the newborn baby, including red and blue cartridges. I've never missed a release date for a Pokemon game since they have come out, except when I was too young, of course. However, with Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red, I only got Leaf Green at the time. We were kids, and I preferred the smaller games, as I called them, more than the big games. So I traded my Pokemon Red at school for a kid's Pokemon Fire Red. It was a great trade, if you ask me. Well, over 10 years later, that exact cartridge found its way back to me as a good friend gave it to me as a gift, and he bought it from that same kid who I hadn't seen since then, as their families are really close. Pretty insane, huh? And if you want to know how I knew it was my exact cartridge, it's because my grandma always wrote my name on my things, and the cartridge that came back to me had my name Jarrett written on the front. How long does it take to make an average Nuzlocke episode with or without deaths? So I'm going to assume they mean Wedlock episode, and for starters it definitely varies. 
This one in specific I've been working on for about three to four hours, six hours if you count the training time, and I still have to edit it and finish answering questions. So with a training montage, it adds a couple of hours, of course. Add a death onto that, and it takes another one to three hours to train. Death scenes add 30 to 40 minutes onto editing. So a basic episode with no training or deaths probably takes 35 minutes to two hours to record, depending on how many cuts are made, two to three hours to edit, and you can add one to three hours for training, an hour for a training montage, an hour or so for a depth scene, maybe more if there's more than one. Some of these take a ton of time, but I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't enjoy it, though many can understand the delay if an episode does take longer or so to make. And to add something on to that, it's actually been a great experience thus far. I've learned how to make layouts and design things completely from scratch with no prior knowledge of Photoshop, and I've completely self-taught editing as well. Two really great skills to have that could eventually lead to a career down the line should YouTube and Twitch not take off in the future. So I would consider this a success regardless of how big I may get down the line. Someone once said to me a thousand subscribers aren't very many, and you know what, in YouTube that might not be a huge number, but think about it like this. Picture yourself standing on a stage with a thousand people in front of you. That's a lot of people. That's basically what this is, but I just can't see all of you. But I know you're all there. Not a single person you know out there knows a thousand people personally. I have over a thousand people who love my content enough to talk to me, follow me, and care enough to watch whenever I make. And that means something. I have entertained and made more people happy than most people will ever do in their entire lives. And that is something to be proud of. And with those questions read and answered, that will be it for this training montage. Just because I didn't use yours doesn't mean it won't be used. If you have a question or just a regular comment, definitely leave it down below and I may just read yours next time. Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Pokemon Emerald No Healing in Battle Wedlock Challenge! In the last episode, Bianca, who we are playing as here, started her adventure in Little Root, getting her first Pokemon being Basil the Trico. And then we caught our first three Pokemon, as you can see in here, being Farley the Poochiena, Twitchy the Zigzagoon, and Maku the Lotad. And we formed our first two pairs, being Basil and Farley and Twitchy and Maku, which I did train up, as you guys just saw or skipped, to level 10. That way they are great to go ahead, and they can all go ahead and fight on their own without any worries. And that's a perfect level for this part of the game. So, with this being said, I do have something very, very pressing that I would like to talk about before I actually jump into this episode. It's nothing very important, but I've had a bit of an issue with this series since I started it. I love the series so far, what I've recorded of it, and I'm having a blast with it, and I've been looking forward to this for a long time. However, I have had something that has been bothering me greatly that I would like to address. Our Lotad Maku has an alright name. It's a nice name. I put it on the list because I like it. However, I made a big mistake when I named our Lotad. There was a name on the list that is far more fitting for Lotad that I wish I would have given her instead. And it would have paired so well with her partner Twitchy and they would have made such an amazing pair. It's something that's going to bother me for a long time should I not address this and do something about it. I know I have never personally really renamed anything that was on the team, but I am going to be renaming Maku the Lotad and I want to make this change now 
in the in the layout and in everybody's minds because the name raider is still pretty far away it's likely that she could die before we ever get the chance to rename her but i want to start calling her the name that i should have given her that way should she make it there she'll always have been known by this name i know this is something very strange to do but it's been bothering me and it's going to bother me the whole game should i not do it and this is something that i feel i do need to do the name would have been so much better and it's still related to the name maku in a way I just, I don't like the name Maku for Lotad. I think it's a cool name, just not for right now. It's a very standout name compared to these really, you know, regular and cool, like, this regular nice names, and then there's this Japanese name thrown in. I just don't like how it looks or sounds. And because of that reason, I am going to do an impromptu renaming of Maku right here. The name that I give her will be on the layout like it would be if it was like a wonder wedlock or something, and it will be in quotations until we actually get to rename her, but I'm going to try my best to say this name instead moving forward. And I would like you guys to do the same. But if you don't and you guys want to refer to her as Maku, even if she makes it the whole game, that's perfectly fine. It can be like kind of a name change, like a legal name change that is happening here, and not something I'm ever really going to do in the future unless this situation arises again. So with that being said, the name that I wish I would have given Maku is actually, uh, Maku is, um, the Japanese name of Idle Springs, which is a realm in Spyro, which if you guys are new to the series, my naming theme is Spyro the Dragon Trilogy name, the original trilogy names from that game, those three games, and there's a realm in the game called Idle Springs, and Maku is, you know, it's Idle Springs, it's like water sounding, I thought it'd be cool for Lotad, and it's kind of cool, but there's a name that's so much better. There's actually a hula girl in the Idle Springs, and I, I, I mentioned this last episode, but it didn't really ring that bell with me. Look at Ludicolo and what Ludicolo is. It's kind of a hula girl. I know it's like, you know, like a, um, a Mexican dancer. I think that's kind of the point of it or whatever, but it's kind of, it's a dancer. It's like a hula girl, and it's just the perfect name. It's a female name, and I think it would go really well with Twitchy. Because I, the way I've looked at Twitchy as of right now is he's kind of nerdy. He twitches back and forth, you know. He's he stutters. He's 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 lonely, and he needs his partner. And I think having a really beautiful girl named Stella would be a great thing for Twitchy moving forward. So with that being said, Maku's name officially as of right now, until we make it to the name raider, is going to be Stella the Hula Girl from Idle Springs in Spyro 2. I like that name so much better. I think Stella and Twitchy are just awesome together, and I like it a lot. I would have traded Maku and changed the name, but I really don't feel like doing that. I think this is a more proper way to go about it, and I really hope this isn't going to bother anybody at the start of the series. It's just something that I really felt was needed to be done. So, with that being said, we now have Basil and Farley and Twitchy and Stella as our team. We don't have Maku anymore. Maku is now Stella, but if you guys would like to refer to her as Maku, I fully understand that as well. With all that out of the way, let's jump into this episode. I am really excited. There's a lot that we can do this episode, and you guys can see our new team members. And I'm going to go ahead and lead with Farley off screen while training. Well, not off screen. I recorded it. Um, we did get some items from Twitchy's pickup. We got Repel. I didn't mean to close the bag. We got a repel, two escape ropes, a super potion, and a great ball, which is really cool. And we might have gotten a pokeball. I don't remember. I, no, I think we bought that many. Yeah, we're good. So with that being said, I already have my opinions on the team because I've spent two hours training them. I'm real. Well, it was an hour and a half, but I'm really excited. Ooh, I remembered, guys. This is a great thing for the. This is a great thing for the series. I remember to turn on battle animations. We're off to a phenomenal start. Now let's have our first real trainer battle besides our rival in this Pokemon Emerald Wedlock, with my favorite team member so far. Let's do it. Let's talk to this youngster. He's like, if you've got Pokemon with you, then you're an official Pokemon trainer. You can't say no to my challenge. No, I can't say no, because you can't be skipped. Not that I, I wouldn't allow that, but you just can't be skipped, Calvin. Calvin's gonna have himself a Poochiana, but his Poochiana is far inferior to Farley. Farley is a literal god in my eyes. I don't know why. I, Farley has resonated with me. He's, she, this is gonna happen a lot. I apologize for anybody new to my channel. I do this a lot. If a Pokemon has a name that could be a guy, it's always a guy. I, I just, that's how I've been. I've, I've always done that with genders. Like my cat's name is Muncho. He's like 19. And my dad always calls him a she. He's been a boy since he was born. So I, 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 I inherited this. 
But I do love Farley a lot. I don't know what it is. I just, I have high hopes for Farley. I don't want to spoil any of my past series in this playthrough, and I'm not going to. But recently, we had a cat Pokemon that was a literal boss who happened to be a dark type. And you know what? This game, we're starting with a dog dark type to lead our team. That's my thoughts. That's my plan. I really hope that that happens. I love Farley so far. I can't get enough of Farley. I really want to know who you guys think is going to be the boss of this journey. Call it right here because when the series is over, you might be able to come back and say, I said so. I think that would be really cool. But honestly, I just, I love Farley. I think she's going to be incredible. I know Dark is a special attack in this generation, unfortunately, meaning, you know, it's going to not be the great greatest with stab and all. But there's just something about Farley. I see this really cute and adorable dog. I just think Farley's incredible. That's, that's really all there is to it. I love Twitchy, too. I've been having some issues with Twitchy because I was like, I always get myself down when it comes to my naming themes. I'm always like, oh, this naming theme sucks. Everybody's going to hate it. I haven't actually posted the first episode yet, so I don't actually know, but I'm act it's growing on me. As I was saying, I was trying to say that I think there's a lot of really regular names on the list, but they all are interesting enough to be to make one really nice list. I got cut off and interrupted there because my capture card actually came unplugged. As I said, I broke it. Um, and the top is like all messed up. It came unplugged, but my new one has been shipped, so I won't have to record very many episodes with this. It's fine. I don't think it'll happen again, but it's it's really lopsided. I posted a couple pictures of it on Twitter, and it, it works at least, which is what matters. I could have dropped it, and it could have completely broken, and that would have been absolutely horrible. But anyways, I think that's enough for Farley right now. What I was trying to say about Twitchy is I, I, I hated the name at first. I was like, oh, God, this is such a stupid name. Everybody's going to hate it. But I, I was thinking about it, and it's actually really adorable if you think about it. Because Zigzagoonio zigs back and forth. It's He's probably, like I said, pretty nerdy, and he's twitchy, and he's, you know, really shy and awkward. And he needs a beautiful low tad like Stella to take him out of his shell. I can see those two being an absolutely incredible pair story-wise. And I mean, he's a normal type with headbutt right out of the gate. He's really, really strong, too. I love Linoon. Like I've said, Linoon's one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Probably my fourth. And I just, I just love it. I don't know what to say about it. I, Twitchy's just awesome. I have high hopes for the regular Pokemon of this adventure being our Zigzagoon and Poochiana. They're my favorites, and I really didn't see that happening. They're really awesome. I love them a lot. And that Taylor we just fought is actually one of the few Pokemon that I really, really wanted to get. Uh, Taylor is actually one of the main Pokemon that I want to use in this playthrough, oddly enough, and we uh, might actually get one in our original six this episode. We've got a couple of chances at it up ahead, which would be pretty cool. I don't think there's a hidden item here. I'm just going to check a little bit. No, but one thing I do have to say about this is these are some berries. These are absolutely invaluable in a no healing wedlock. Berries are like the most important thing in the game, and you might be like, why aren't you going to plant them? Pokemon Emerald's battery is dry, and there's a thing called a berry glitch. I don't know much about it, but I do know that no matter what I do, they will not grow. So every one of these berries that I find are one-time uses. There is no replanting, and there is no regrowing. I am a farmer that cannot farm, basically. Bas so I'm not a farmer. Y you know what I meant. There's no farmersonly.com for for Bianca out there. No siree. That's just not a thing. So I am going to go ahead and fight this girl with Maku. Uh, I think she has a Ralt. No, she doesn't have a Ralt. She has a... I don't really care. I'm going to fight her with Maku. I'm sorry. It's going to take a couple episodes. I'm going to fight her with Stella. It's It'll take me a little bit. You think I got? you have problems remembering a Pokemon's gender? Try telling me to call a Pokemon by its name that isn't on the screen for me to read. We're going to do this with Stella. All right, she has a Zigzagoon, so I think Stella would be great for this. I think Stella's a really pretty name. I think it's like, you know, it's like a... You, you picture, like, a like a, one of those beautiful model girls being named Stella, you know? You don't, like, picture it being named, like, Tammy or anything, you know? Like, you, you think of, like... I, I don't know. I don't know what you think of when you see, hear the name Tammy. I think of Melissa McCarthy and, like... You know, not the not the prettiest girl. You know, some people... I'm going to stop talking. But you might, like... You know, you know what I'm saying? You think, like, model type when you think of Stella. And that's what Twitchy needs in his life. He doesn't need a Maku. He needs a Stella. Maku sounds like Magoo. And I don't know what that is, but it sounds like a joke. 
so we're gonna have Twitchy have a nice partner here, and I, I, it fits better. It, that's all there is to it, is it fits better. I realize my mistake, staying in against the Shroomish. I know we're not weak to it, but I didn't actually see what she was sending out. I was rambling. You guys know this is a problem for me, and that's something we can't be having. At least I trained. If I didn't train, then I would probably have a death, but I highly recommend training your new Pokemon. There's no reason not to. Abilities are a thing in Gen 3, as we'll see here. No, I thought we were gonna get paralyzed by, you know. Abilities are a thing, so, you know, things like that have effects for and stuff like that. It's not as easy as, like, a Gen 2 game would be. So, you definitely have to be on your feet. Always train ahead. You have a level limit for a reason. Just don't pass it, and you're fine. You can train whenever you would like. And I know training level 10, I won't pass level 15 by the time I make it to Roxanne, so there's really no reason. This is... I, almost, I was gonna call it Ralts, but... Speaking of, I trained for an hour and a half. I only ran into one Ralts, I believe. I've only seen one Ralt the entire time I've ran around here, which is absolutely ridiculous. They're, they're not even that rare. I found, like, more CDOT than I've seen Ralt. I have no idea, honestly. It's ridiculous. I'm going to go ahead and heal up, and then we're going to go ahead and meet that sickly boy I referred to last episode. Nothing of interest in the Pokemon Center in there. I don't think there's anybody that gives you anything in this town, except for your father, which... Wait, yeah, that's right. He doesn't give you anything either. He decides to give something to the neighbor boy! Instead, you'll see, it's just like my dad. Watch this. Huh. Well, if it isn't Bianca, so you're all finished moving in? I'm surprised you managed to get here by yourself. So already being condescending to his own kid. Not only that, the neighbor boy's like, hey, I would like to get a Pokemon, please. Oh, sure, I'll give you a Pokemon. I didn't give my kid one for 10 years. It's literally the same thing as my dad. My dad always loved the neighbor kids better. Always. And he denies it, but I know better. My dad always liked the other kids better, especially my friend Cody. That's a completely different story. I, he loves M Cody more than me. I have to... <laughs> Daddy issues! No, I'm just kidding. I really don't care. But anyways, he's going to go ahead and give Wally a Zigzagoon just like that. Wally's going to be like, I'm going to go catch a Pokemon. And boys and girls, just watch this. I found one Ralts in two hours. And Wally on cue is like, whoa, it's a Ralts. Hi, how are you doing? What's up? It's a Ralts. Oh boy, a goodie, a common Pokemon. Just what I wanted, said Wally. I'm like, common? I don't care about this. It's a catching tutorial. We don't care about this. We know he gets a Ralts, and this Ralts, like, becomes female later, right? I'm pretty certain it does. Anyways, we're done here. Surprise, surprise! Wally caught the Ralts. I would have knocked it out. Which, if you guys didn't know, it's possible for him to do that. And he still gets it. The Golden Boy Wally, everybody! No, I don't have any issues against Wally. He's all right. Yeah, look, my dad wants to know how it worked out. He's so glad that he got Wally a Pokemon. I don't care about you, Dad. I got a Trico from that cool Birch guy. Wait. Yeah, Birch guy. I was like, wait, that's not a Birch. That's a Mudkip. No, it's Birch. Anyways, it's old series references. Anyways, yeah, he wants me to go collect the gym badges so he can fight me. He's like, I can't legally fight you because you're my, you're my child. But once you get badges, I'm allowed to cream you and murder your Pokemon. So go get badges. That's all he really cares about. I care about this fat guy that's about to come say hi to me. I want to see some Scott. What's up? Look at him. He's like, how you doing? My name's Scott. You're, from the way you're dressed, you're Pokemon trainer. Unfortunately, though, your clothes aren't that dirty, so you're either a rookie or you're just some dumb kid. Anyways, I'm looking for trainers. Sorry to have taken your time. <laughs> Excuse me, Scott. I'm a trainer. I'm great. I got, I've got a Pujana <laughs> and a Zigzagoon. Well, maybe I am just an ordinary trainer. <laughs> Moving on. We're on Route 4. We can get a new Pokemon here. So I've been deciding kind of where I should get my encounter first. I was thinking, should I get it in Petalburg Woods? Because I believe here I can get... Uh, Taylo, Wingall, I know, a Wingall! I can get Taylo, Wingall, and Meryl, which I don't want Meryl. Meryl's the thing that I want the least. I don't really want to use Meryl. I've used one to great success in a previous lock of mine in my personal time, and while this was long ago, I'd like to, you know, use Taylo or Wingall. However, in the Petalburg Woods, I can get Taylo, Silcoon, or... Shroomish, which I really want Shroomish. And seeing as how I can lock myself into get, if I get a Taylo here, not getting Taylo in the Pedalberg Woods, I think I decided I'm going to go ahead and get my encounter here. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get my encounter for Route 104. Anything that's eligible, male or female, will count. So my encounter for Route 104. Actually, who's up front? 
Yeah, I think that's good. All right, my encounter. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that with Makut. Stella. Stella. It's Stella. It's Stella, guys. All right, we're going to do it with Farley. So my encounter for Route 104 is going to be... I would prefer Wingall, honestly. Nah, that sucks. All right, we got a Meryl. It's whatever. It doesn't suck. It does if it doesn't have huge power. If it doesn't have huge power, yes, it, it sucks. Fairly, fairly a, fair, a fair bit. It sucks bad, but that's okay. I'll make it work to the best of my abilities. I haven't used a Meryl for some time, so I suppose it's not that bad. I'm going to go ahead and actually throw a uh, Pokeball at it. I was going to throw a Great Ball, but I don't know if it's great yet. It might not be great. It might not have huge power, which would make it very not great. And it doesn't deserve a Great Ball if that's the case. But I'll love it the same anyways, guys. I'm not a Meryl hater. I kind of am. If they don't have huge power, I'm kind of a Meryl hater. But I like to make things that aren't the greatest work. And if it doesn't, I'm in for the long haul. So Meryl is the Aquamouse Pokemon. Its body is covered with water repellent fur. Because of the fur, it can swim through water at high speed without being slowed by the water's resistance. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and check my naming list, which is Spyro the Dragon Original Trilogy Names, and I'll be back in a sec. All right, guys, I've kind of got a cool name for it. So I don't actually know the species of this NPC in Spyro 2, but they are from the Ocean Speedway. They have a side quest that you can do in the Speedway, and she's a queen. It is a specifically female character, and the name of this NPC is Queen Blank. Obviously, this isn't all going to fit, but we can refer to this Meryl as that NPC. So I'm going to go ahead and just name this Meryl after that queen's name. And the name of the queen from the Ocean Speedway in Spyro 2 is... Queen Finny! We have Queen Finny, the Meryl. And yes, I know Queen Finny would fit, but I don't want to have it without a space. So we have Queen Finny, the Meryl which I think is pretty sweet. But I don't actually want to say pretty sweet. I will retract that quickly if it doesn't have huge power. So tell me, does my Queen Finny have huge power? It doesn't! Oh, my heart! It's been ripped out and stomped on in several pieces! Oh! I am not relaxed about this! I'm disappointed! <laughs> Queen Finny is not, not great. Queen Finny has thick fat. It probably won't ever help her. So you're calling my Queen fat? I personally don't think Finny is very fat, but we're going to roll with it. So I'm fat, though, so it's okay. I understand, Finny. I understand. So we're not... <laughs> I'm disappointed now. Queen Finny is a joke. Has all much... Oh, I should have named her after the, the other guy. There's a guy a character that is like a colonel, and his name is Colonel Blub. Colonel Blub would have been the best name if this was a male Meryl. If I knew it had thick fat. But Queen Finny's the best name for it, honestly. But it's just unfortunate that she doesn't have some huge power to back her. That's really unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I mean, if I'm going to use a thick, fat Meryl, it would be in Generation 3. As, you know, there aren't any physical water moves anyways. So, I mean, I guess we could make it work. It's just not the most ideal situation to be in, I suppose. Let's see what my encounter would have been. I'll do it up here. Uh, yeah, I'll get, I'll, like, explore this area and stuff after we get our encounter in the Petalburg Woods. I just want to fill out our original six before we take this area down. So what would have my encounter been had not been Queen Finny? It wouldn't have been a Wurmple because it doesn't count. So we probably would have ended up getting a Meryl. I'm not going to run around until we find something else. There's really no point. But I, I do enjoy. I, Queen Finny's all right. I like the name. I like, I, it's fine. It's not what I wanted. It's the least thing that I wanted. But maybe we'll make up for it by getting what I really, really want, what I really, really want here in the Petalburg Woods. I probably should never make that reference again. But yeah, we need a male Pokemon here. I really, 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 really hope it's not a Silcoon. That would be mightily unfortunate. But yeah, don't get to pick what you want. It's a Nuzlocke. Well, it's a Wedlock. So my encounter for the Pebbleburg Woods could potentially be Shroomish, Shroomish, Shroomish. Yeah, all right, this doesn't count. So Wormple does not count. I really hope this isn't another <laughs> Stella incident where we run into Lotad after Lotad after Lotad and they're all the wrong gender. But this is going to be the last time, hopefully, we have to do that. It could not be the last time. It might actually take... It might happen a lot if this gets really dicey later on. Anyways, my encounter for the Petalburg Woods could potentially be... Shroomish. That would be great. No! No, that's a Cascoon. Never mind. No, it's not! It's a Silcoon! No! <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, that's depressing! It's the right gender and everything! No! I got a silk! 
Welcome to the original six, Silcoon! Oh, that's such a bad, bad, bad pair. I wanted a Shroomish, why? This is like the first wedlock in a long time on the channel where I didn't get incredible encounter luck. I've gotten fairly bad luck. I got a thick fat Meryl. I got a low dad is what I was supposed to get. Um, I didn't get the Wingall I wanted. I didn't, I mean, yeah, I got, I kind of got gypped. I could have got Ralts. My encounter luck has been fairly horrible. And now we have a Silcoon. Like, legitimately, this is my encounter and I'm disappointed about it. There's no way out. Okay. I don't crit it, please, because then I'll regret this. Yeah, I want it. I'm not going to ever knock out an encounter that's on purpose. That's ridiculous. I am going to go for it in full stride and hope for the best. This is my, this is a part of our original six. Getting the ball. Getting the ball, Silcoon. Don't make me. Don't make me sad, please. Oh. I don't want to waste poke balls, but I also don't want to. Okay, it's hardened, but that's the thing. If I, I knew I wouldn't kill it. If I crit, I kill it, and I'm going to be really sad. I know everybody out there would hate me. And I would be, I'd regret it. I'm not going to use the Great Ball, because this isn't great. I'm going to use it on a great Pokemon, of course. You know, like Amp, like, like, like Blaziken or like Wizmer or something, honestly. Obviously, I can't catch a Blaziken, but I'm, I'm kind of reserving it for a Wizmer. Because everybody, you know, compares me to a certain Pokemon out there, and I'd love to use that Pokemon on this adventure. I think that'd be pretty fun. So... I don't want to waste any more Pokeballs in this. I'm going to tackle it, and I'm really, really, really sorry if I crit it. I don't want to. I really don't. Thank you. I'm going to do it again, because I know I won't knock it out unless I crit it. Oh, God. All right, I'm going to throw another Pokeball at it. We've got money for more. We can't heal in battle, so I guess we don't need money. Why are you struggling to be caught, Silcoon? I didn't even want you. I wanted a Shroomish. What? Mm, get in the ball, Silcoon. I'm getting heated, and I don't want to be heated. It's too hot out for that. It's like 80 degrees outside, Silcoon. I don't have time for this. Fahrenheit for you Celsius people. Thank you. We have a Silcoon, and it's been caught. So... Per to my rule previous game clause, I'm not allowed to catch Wurmple or Cascoon because I used a Dust Ox in my past. But Silcoon, unfortunately, is eligible. I've never used a Beautifly, and my time to use one is now, apparently. We have Silcoon, the Cocoon Pokemon. It prepares for evolution using the energy it stored while it was a Wurmple. It keeps watch over the surroundings with its two eyes. I'm gonna check that naming theme list I mentioned earlier for a name, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, guys, I have a couple of names that I really like for this Silcoon, but I don't know what I should go with. One of them is a clear-cut meme name, and it's only in my mind as a name for this because almost every playthrough I've done on the channel, a Pokemon in my original six has had kind of a joke name, and this is my last attempt at that. But I don't know if it actually makes sense. I, it's kind of all right. I'm going to save it for something else. So, yeah. So I'm going to go with the other one. Um, the other one, there are two Firefly brothers in the realm in Spiral 3, Spooky Swamp. And, you know, I know it's a butterfly when it evolves, but it's kind of like a firefly. It's pretty, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's like, it's like a firefly. Go with it. So with that being said, I want to name it after one of the two Firefly brothers. They're both in a little orb quest where Sheila the Kangaroo has to guide them through the swamp while other things try to attack them. And they're kind, they're kind of blind. They're kind of dumb. And they they have a famous little audio clip where they, when they, when they get hit they're like, ow! <laughs> I mean they're kind of a meme of themselves I suppose, but it doesn't the name isn't like a meme name or anything. You'll see the meme name later on in this playthrough I'm sure. But as of right now I'm gonna go ahead and name Silcoon after one of the two Firefly brothers. I don't know which one yet, but they both start with a B, so I guess I can make up my mind in the transition. So, the Firefly brother I'm naming the Silcoon after is Busan. We have Busan the Silcoon from the two brothers being Basho and Busan. Uh, the reason I'm saying Basho now is because I don't think I'm going to name anything else that since they're both kind of the same thing. I was actually going to do Basho. I had Basho typed up for quite some time, but I actually went with Busan because I think Finny and Busan sound better than Finny and Basho. 
which is the main reason I did it. I know they're probably not going to be together forever, and if they are, they'll die together. But I still think Finny and Busan are really cool together. I think Finny, Busan, Twitchy and Stella, and Farley and Basil are a great original six, regardless of them not being what I wanted. They're still pretty cool. And obviously, Busan has the same um, ability as it would any other time. It never has another ability. Uh, and a calm nature, which I think is all right. I can't remember what it does off the top of my head. I apologize. I should really, really remember these things, but I, I'm so used to the older, all well, the newer games is telling you that I forget sometimes. Anyways, Finny and Busan. I, I like it. It's not what I wanted, but it's something, and I'll take it. I don't really have a choice. I guess before I go to the Pokemon Center, what would my next encounter have been? We might as well just get the Shroomish out of the way now so everybody can, can laugh at me in the comments section. No, it's just a Wurmple, so... We were destined to get a Beautifly from the very start, I guess. That's fine. I'm cool with it. I am. Beautifly could be cool. Who knows? It really would have been cool if I went with a meme name. Some of you guys, if you know Spyro, might know what I was talking about there. Anyways, I believe this scroll gives me something. No. We can just pick up a Pokeball right here. Yeah, that's all. And we can head back to the Pokemon Center and then take on these trainers. I'll train up uh, Finny and Busan in the next episode for taking on Petalburg Woods, I believe. So definitely get in those questions and comments if you want them to potentially be in an episode. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and heal up here and we're going to take on the trainers. I don't believe there's very many left. Not that I fought any over there. I just wanted to finish those trainers off before we end the episode. Not that we've really done much this episode, but I just wanted to fill out our original six really early on. I believe I did that in Omega Ruby as well. That way we have them and you guys can get to know the original six because they probably will not be here very long. This is a really, really hard challenge. This is going to be incredibly rough. And you know what? I didn't want Meryl, but I, Meryl's growing on me. I think Meryl was in more interesting than Taylo and Wingull, probably. Even though I would have rather had one of those two a little bit more. So, there's a random Pokeball right here. Here, 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 here. I'll get it after the battle. There's a Pokeball. In, well, not a Pokeball. There's a Heart Scale. What, I'm, what am I talking about? Pokeball. There's a heart scale in the sand. There's a viper in the grass. That's a Sly Cooper reference. I, I don't know why I tell you the references. It ruins them. Some people might have been like, hey, Sly Cooper. And it's like, I knew that. But then you can't be like, I know that reference because I told you. You guys know what I'm talking about. Twitchy's far more superior than that guy Zigzagoon was. And this guy has a C-Dot. So there's actually, an, you know, this C-Dot has Bide. There's no reason for me to attack it, even though I could probably take it out in one shot. I know it uses Bide, so I'm going to do the smart thing and stall it before it actually, you know, well, that's unfortunate. Well, this is just not very nice, is it? Twitchy, you can't die to Bide. I refuse to let that happen, so I'm just going to go ahead and wait. There we go. He let up first. All right, I'll go ahead and Tail Whip again twice, one more time after this, and then I'll go for it. Because I'll be able to take it out after it uses Unleashed Energy. Because it hasn't, it doesn't have any energy stored. So I'll be able to take it out in one shot after the Tail Whips. And if I don't, I'll be able to take it out before it's able to set up Bide again. That way there's no risk at all. Because if I Headbutt didn't do over half and it used Bide right away, I, I, it could have killed me. I, I just, I didn't want to risk it. There's no reason to do that. It's just a really dumb thing to do this early on in the game, honestly. And he got sand in his runners. I have no idea what a runners is. But I'm guessing it might be his shoes. I think it's right here. 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 I know where it's at. It's like right here. Are you kidding me? I may refuse to cut. I know where this heart scale is. I'm not losing my mind. It's right here. It's right here. No, it's right here. It's right here. There, I, I knew that. That's what I, I called it. That's the first time I checked. I swear that was the first time. This guy is a trainer. I'm going to fight him with, with Stella. I'm doing it, guys. I'm going to do it with Stella. All right. Yeah, he's got a Magikarp, so he's not really necessary to show. But I haven't really done much except catch Pokemon this episode, so I suppose we'll show Fisherman Darian. Darian has a Magikarp, level 9. This is the most intense fight of the game! If it was 11 levels higher and not a Magikarp, it would have been. But it's not, so it's dead. And that fight's over. I am surprised that it gave that much experience. Magikarp no normally doesn't tend to give that much. Gave Stella quite a bit of XP right there. Awesome. 
All right, yeah, so there's some more berries up here. Like I said, I'll never be able to replant these, unfortunately, so this is one-time things here. Luckily, they give you quite a bit, but I don't believe you get very many citrus berries. I might only get, like, one or two throughout the entire game, and oran berries aren't going to be really helpful at all later down the line. That 10 hit points later down the line will never be anything to save anybody's life. It's just not something that I'm even going to bother with most places. So, uh, and at least not right then. Early on, I probably will. I'll probably start attaching them in the next episode. Because, like I said, they're not going to be useful down the line or anything. So, um, yeah. Matt's Briny's house. Briny's not there until we beat the first gym leader, of course. And save his darling Wingall. Oh my god. We're going to have to save a Wingall. Am I allowed? Is that allowed on the channel? Am I allowed to save a Wingall? Is that even permitted? So many people that are new to the series on well, my channel is going to be like, why? What's your problem with Wingall? Watch Pokemon Y. I don't like Wingall. They're like my least, one of my least favorite Pokemon of all time. And I said Wingall far, many, far too many times at one point, and the YouTube comment section ran away with it. It became a channel staple, a channel meme. And it's basically all there is to it. That's why I scream, a Wingall! Because that was, that was the joke. For anybody that doesn't know. I don't know why I'm explaining this. This is things, this is supposed to be inside jokes. And now I just ruined it for all of the people out there that knew the inside joke. All the cool people just lost like 10 cool points. You probably gained cool points, honestly. Because if you know anything about my channel, you're already not cool. Not because like you guys aren't cool. Because, I mean, we all are pretty nerdy, honestly. You know, but that's all right. To me, nerds are cool. I'm just saying like the general population. I've seen a couple people say, oh, I watch your videos in school before school starts. And I heard, saw one person say that their headphones came unplugged and it just went, hello, everybody. And then everybody looked at them. I sincerely apologize to you. I can only imagine how much that ruined your street cred. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, a like is appreciated. It helps out a great deal. And if you want to see more Pokemon wedlocks like Pokemon Emerald, feel free to subscribe. I really hope you do, because that lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content as much as I enjoy making it. So with that being said, definitely let me guys, let me know what you guys think of the new pair being Finny and Busan and the fully rounded off team of six. This is our original six. Which one of these six will be here at the end? Or which one of these six will die last? Definitely let me know what you guys think down below. So with that being said, in the next episode, we're going to make our way Oh, I'm blanking. To Rustboro City, home of the first gym leader of the game. So with that being said, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.